Hello, everyone. Welcome to Revere Electric's webinar on machine solutions utilizing Armored Kinetics and Armored PowerFlex. My name is Ken Foster, and I'll be today's moderator. During the event, you can use the left pane to navigate between chat and other event information. Please submit questions live through the chat window, and we will review and answer them at the end of the presentation. For those that want the presentation display larger, there is a full screen option. A PDF of today's slides is available for download on the handout screen that's represented by a paperclip icon. In today's webinar, Tom Roth and Mike Stock will be presenting on machine solutions utilizing Armor Kinetics and Armor PowerFlex. Armor Kinetics and Armor PowerFlex are solutions designed to streamline the installation, commissioning, and maintenance processes while optimizing performance through on-machine distributed architecture. This session will focus on best practices to show you how on-machine solutions can increase installation speed, utilize design efficiencies, reduce the overall machine footprint, and reduce mean time to repair. I mentioned today's presenters are Mike Stock and Tom Roth. Mike is our automation manager and has been with Revere Electric for 23 years. He has extensive experience working with customers on automation applications, primarily with motion control systems. Tom is our technical solutions consultant, working with Revere Electric for six years. He has also an extensive background working with our customers on automation applications. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tom and Mike. Thanks, Ken. Well, today's marketplace is evolving at a rapid pace. Typical pain points on these projects include aggressive timelines, high installation costs, unplanned downtime, a lot of complexity that causes installation de delays, and we're all being tasked with doing more with less. Because of this, we need more dynamic, capable machines. These machines need enhanced flexibility um, enhanced throughput and improved uptime. These can be achieved by utilizing on-machine solutions. So what is an on-machine solution? Well, an on-machine solution moves us from a centralized design to a decentralized design. A centralized design can be complex and include long wires, a lot of point-to-point -point connections, a large physical footprint, which makes it prone to errors and higher thermal load. A decentralized design helps increase design build efficiencies, reduce those wiring errors, and decrease floor space needs. Let's take a look at an example of this. So first, uh, a decentralized design uses purposely designed standard catalog items to move those out of a panel. That causes our smaller footprint, and it moves them out onto the machine distributed control for faster production and installation of these machines. Well, it does this by eliminating the manual wiring, which manual wiring can take up to 10 minutes per connection, and moving to quick connect connectors, which are constructed by in to industry standards, engineered, manufactured, and tested. They're a standard catalog item, and that reduces risk, lead to less time to install, and gives you more reliability. These rigid, reduced designs from the rigid designs of the past lead us to these flexible, scalable, and modular designs that are easily repeatable and testable um, for an OEM, and then it's easier to make changes because a quick cable change is all you need. Some of the benefits of on-machine solutions include faster installation speed using that quick connect technology, that better design efficiency for a simpler, more modular approach, reduced footprint, which saves floor space and minimizes the time to deploy, and reduced mean time to restoration because you can utilize a less skilled workforce to replace your components if there's a failure. This reduction can reduce cost by more than 
During the rest of the presentation, we'll discuss some of these features, but included in on machine solutions are the Armor PowerFlex drives, which we'll discuss today, Armor Block 5000 IO, which can bring your sensors directly into your controller and you can locate it nearby, our Armor Kinetics distributed servo drive, which we'll discuss today, as well as even an Armor View Panel View Plus 7 graphics terminal which you can then connect power and ethernet to and have a pre-configured terminal ready to go. So Mike Stock is gonna take us through the Armor Kinetics distributed servo drive. Take it away, Mike. Mike, you're still muted. All right, let's try it again with, uh, with the sound on. The first, the first drive we'd like to look at, the first on-machine product we'd like to look at is the Armor Kinetics. This drive answers the question, what if I didn't have to put my servos in the panel? The Armor Kinetics is based on the Kinetics 5700 uh, drive structure. And so it's, it's a tried and true proven solution that's been around for a long time. It has the standard experience with Studio 5000. But it also adds new features that we didn't have before, like vibration monitoring and the ability to have gigabit Ethernet to the drives. This drive is available in both a distributed servo drive alone and a servo drive and motor combination for more size and flexibility. Here's an overview of the system. It consists of a power supply module in the cabinet called a PIM, and it can feed up to 24 drives per power supply. And if you need additional drives, you can add another power supply to the system to extend your number of drives. And if you have a motor that uses a drive that's larger than the system can handle, you can still add a standard Kinetics 5700 drive. Here's a closer look at what the cabling looks like. From the him from the power supply module comes a single hybrid cable based on the standard current uh, Rockwell servo cables. This hybrid cable comes out to the first drive on the machine and is daisy chained from there to all the other drives in the loop. The ethernet comes with it in the cable. And if you want to have a closed loop ethernet system, you can actually bring the ethernet back from the last drive back into your system. So how do you choose which one? You choose the uh, distributed drive and motor to get the smallest footprint, the easiest installation, just bolt it on and your one cable, your drive motor, everything's ready to go. But there are applications where um, the size, the length of the drive and motor is too much. And so in that case, you can mount just an on-machine drive next to the motor and use standard motors. This is also a great solution when you need a food grade motor, uh, a hygienic motor, or you're just applying it to a system where you already have motors. It's uh, you have the option. This describes the size. It goes up to a 130 millimeter frame size motor. It can have the motor brake. It has uh, all the same LEDs. Again, back to consistent experience. The same LEDs that would have been on the front of the drive are now on the back of the on-machine drive. So whatever experience you have troubleshooting, you can extend that to these. Again, it points out that it is gigabit capable. Here's a slide that shows the difference, how the, how the drive attaches to the motor. On the right, we have a standard VPL motor. And on the left, we have the motor connected to the on-machine drive, and you'll note that it only adds about four inches. So it really is a uh, space-saving design. Again, it supports a wide variety of motors. So the last slide showed a being used with a VPL motor, but if you use the distributed servo drive, you can also connect to the MP series of motors, which includes the MPL, standard motor, the MPF food grade motor, MPS stainless, 
those are all available to be uh, applied with this drive. It is IP67 rated, which is based on the, the weak point is, I guess, the connector. And you can have safety up to cell three. Here's an overview of the size of what a distributed servo drive looks like and the various connectors associated with it. Now we have the power interface module, the PIM. It has up to 15 kilowatts of output power, so you have a, a maximum of, of 24 motors, but that will be limited by the, the 15 kilowatts. It could be 240, 460, and uh, again, if you need more motors than that, you can put several of these side by side. It's based on the Kinetics 5700, so it uses the power supplies from the standard drives that uh, have been around for a long time. Here's another example of the system design. So the single cable design uh, is shown here, but what it's highlighting in the center there is a slip ring. If you have an application that involves a slip ring, say a, a filler or a capper, then this makes a, a really um, no-brainer choice where you all you have to run through the slip ring is the one standard cable and it has the the DC bus, and then the Ethernet comes through there, and it allows you to place all of your uh, drives and motors on the rotating machinery without, without a large amount of cable. I'd like to add a little something there, Mike. This is That'd Tom. That'd be great. Thank Again, you. Um, one thing, um, the Ethernet cable that you see on the top of this slide um, is to complete the DLR circuit. The standard Ethernet does come through the hybrid cables through the slip ring. It's not a requirement to bring the um, DLR cable back, but if you want a true DLR network, you need to bring that back. But also want to talk about a recent application where we have 24 of these Armor Kinetics DSMs inside of the slip ring on rotating plates on, on a bottling type machine. Um, on each one of those DSMs, there's also an I.O. connector, which we're using for registration on those bottle plates. So as the bottles go by, it can sense and orient them um, correctly. Um, and that's a high speed I.O. point that can be used for registration. In this case, there was also a second PIM where they have the eight other machine in feed and out feed and um, tooling used. And they used the DSDs, the drives. And in some cases, the DSD is mounted and the VPL motor is next to it. Um, this allowed them to take two bays out of their control panel, saving about 72 inches, um, 72 by 16 of floor space and give more um, visual access to the machine. So that was a very good reason to use this. Next, you'll find in the presentation when you download it, there's a series of manuals that are available to help you um, specify and give you the specifics on the Armor Kinetics. So when you download this, these are all hot links that you can download on the manuals right from the internet. So let's dive into Armor PowerFlex drives. So the Armor PowerFlex is an on-machine variable frequency drive with integrated safety, um, utilizes Rockwell's Premier integration. Um, it has integrated SIP security, and it gives you an overall simplified experience. Right now, it ranges from one to 10 horsepower and is IP66 washdown. So once again, it offers us um, a lot when it comes to the intelligence and getting data out of there, it gives you the simplified experience so you can implement it, commission it faster with less training. Um, SIP security, which everyone knows that security is becoming um, more and more prevalent within our manufacturing facilities, not just our home computers and our banks. So there's a new um, aspect that's being built into the Rockwell components called SIP security. There'll be other webinars in the future coming on that. So what is the Armor PowerFlex? So look at it from a hardware perspective. You'll see that this drive has a local disconnect, which also gives you status indication when you're using this through Ethernet. 
Um, some of the features with 100 ka sccr rating it does have branch circuit protection fuses built into the drive you'll see there are power connectors so you can either bring a single power in and a t connector or you can daisy chain in and out these are available in different options which we will get into um, wide uh, ambient temperature and flexible mounting orientation so it can be horizontal vertical and up to a 45 degree angle it comes standard with um, an 8-pin encoder you can bring into it. It has a connector for um, options like um, dynamic braking resistor, as well as a mechanical brake on the, from the motor. There's two variants of this drive. There is the safety variant and the standard variant. You'll notice the really only difference you see are the three red connectors, which indicate that this has the ability to do safety, which can either be hardwired through these connectors or they can be network safety using a uh, compact guard logics or a control guard logics um, processor. So you have these three safety IO. If you choose to use network safety, these IO become standard safety IO. So you can use them to bring in sensors um, that are lo located near these drives. Other than that, the, the, the main functions of the drives are exactly the same in terms of having the encoder, local or manual control, as well as a local maintenance disconnect. So from a software perspective, these two have gigabit ethernet ports um, on the front of their units. They're um, used the standard add-on profiles in Studio 5000. They do have the ability to do automatic device configuration, which supports um, faster um, repair times because the controller will actually go out and look at the drive and configure it if it sees it, um, a new product get put in there, as well as firmware supervisors so that it makes sure that this unit is at the appropriate firmware for your um, when turned on in Studio 5000, it makes sure the appropriate firmware is downloaded to the device. So as we go into here, you can see that it's available in what we call the frame A and frame B um, right now, where frame A is a one to three horsepower and frame B is five to 10. You'll see some better pictures in a minute of what those look like. You can see there's a slight difference there. And they're available in a, uh, a, a couple of different physical um, and power entries. So frame A are one to three horsepower. It's shown with a connector, optional connector guard on it, IO and splash guard, as well as an optional braking resistor. And you can see that it's fairly compact. As we get into the frame B, which gives us the five to 10 horsepower, you notice there's a fan now on front of it. This is an IP67 um, fan so that it allows for cooling. And once again, shown with the optional IO splash guard and um, braking resistor. These both are currently available today. Um, you saw on another chart where there's a frame C, which they're working on, which will extend this line up to 20 horsepower, but that'll be in the future. As you can see, there's different entries for how we're going to bring our main power into the Armor Power Flex. We have our standard conduit entry, um, M35 um, connectors, as well as the D DSINA type uh, rectangular connector. Um, I find that the most popular two of, in, in North America are these two, whether it's conduit entry or the cables. That gives you the flexibility of mounting using cable trays versus using seal tight but all depends on the environment and what the customer would like. So in terms of speed and scale, uh, scalability, we have the ability, you can see, to do um, integrated safe torque off. So right here, you can see we have sensors physically connected, um, e-stop push buttons connected to the drive, for, and then using a, a control guard logics and some safety IO in order to get our safety, we can get up to SIL 3 PLE CAT 4 rating in this arrangement. But we can also do that as a hardwired safe torque off with the right um, guard master relays and bring our 
daisy chained safe torque off signals to the drives, we can still maintain that that SIL3 PLE category four. So in this instance, we don't have a compact guard logic, so we have a standard guard logics, and we could have whether it's a, a 440R guard master relay or even a CR30 located here to handle the safety for our network. Also, one of the options you have is what's called internal or external powering. What this allows you to do with internal power, you have your 480 volts coming into the device, and that will power up the control and the power section. The disconnect on the device will only disconnect power to the IGBTs as long as this main switch gear power is on, you will have control um, ability to communicate via the control. But in the case where you want to maintain the control on and also turn off the main service disconnect at the switch gear, you can use what's called external power supply, supply your own 24 volt power supply, which could be an on machine 24 volt power supply and power up the control section. So the rest of your control system, you can still do diagnostics um, of this device while the main 480 volt power is off. Additionally, with this, you have the ability for uh, having an electromechanical brake on the motor. Well, that's, a, that's an option as well on the drive. So in a standard where there is no brake, you'll see it utilizes a four pin connector on the bottom. That's an M29 size to bring in um, our connections are UV and W connections to the motor as well as the ground. When we have a brake, it will then be a seven pin connector and you can see it brings in those brake connections so you can um, fully control that um, motor brake with the Armor Power Flex. So the big thing with on machine is we're trying to reduce downtime. So as part of that with automatic device configuration, um, if you have your ethernet switch set up um, with dynamic IP address assignment, you can plug in a new drive. The switch will assign the drive, the IP address. The controller with firmware supervisor, like I said, will look and see that as a, a drive is not the firmware, it will take over and it will download the firmware. And when that's completed, it will then take the standard configuration that you have saved in your um, controller and download that to the drive as well. So once the IP address is set, the recovery um, is less than 30 seconds to, to get your system up and running. So you can see how this is very um, a smooth transition moving into um, meantime to um, restoration. The last thing in terms of the Armor Power Flex, because of the various number of options and cables, included the manuals which kind of go through the different items that you'll need with an armor power flex from the user manual the technical data as well as the cable connections and selections because you have all of the standard cables and straight and right angle um, on all the different ports and these documents are very handy to go through when you're trying to specify an armor power flex system thank you so ken are there any questions in the chat yeah, um, let me um, let me take a look uh, into that chat window for any questions. And well, it doesn't look like we have any at the moment, um, but we will give people a minute or two to to enter any final thoughts. Um, I just want to remind everybody that again, there is a PDF of today's slides uh, available for download on the handout screen uh, that is represented by that paperclip icon. And I'll go through here again. I do want to thank Tom and Mike for sharing uh, this review with us. Uh, and for those that are watching uh, and want to have further discussions about these products, please reach out to your Revere Electric account managers. And once we do sign off, I ask that you take a minute to complete the survey. Your feedback helps us continue to deliver informative content on the most significant technologies and solutions. And let me get back to that chat window again. And no, so, all right. Well, thank you for attending uh, and make sure you visit Revere Electric's Virtual Education Center 
for any additional webinars.